Hello, my name is Dr. Steve Sandler. I'm an osteopath, I'm a PhD, and I'm from London. I'm going to take you on a little journey. I want you to imagine yourself back in the Midwest in 1860, at the time of the Cowboys on the Wild West. The cowboy gets shot in the film, they take him into the doctor. What did the doctor have in 1860? Well, nothing that we can find today in the pharmacy existed in 1860. There were no antibiotics, there were no antivirals, there was no antisepsis. A doctor would put on a dirty coat with blood, with pus. He never washed his hands between operations. He didn't know he was transferring disease from one to the other. He had some anatomy, he had some physiology, he had a basic understanding of pathology. And he had basic medications. Very often they were alcohol based or they were mercury or sulfur poisons. Now in this background we meet Dr. Andrew Taylor Still, the son of a Methodist minister, the son of a barefoot doctor who went around the local parishes with his treatments and with his healing. Andrew went to the University Medical School in Kansas. The records are not quite clear, but when he graduated, he was given what medicine had to offer him at that time. Various things happened in Andrew's life, but he was very unhappy with this idea of what medicine had. He wasn't alone. At the same time, Daniel Palmer was in Iowa looking at what he thought was chiropractic. You had magnet healers, electric healers, people that touch bumps on your head. All sorts of different things were happening. But in this foundation came osteopathy. He looked at a different way of healing. He used his hands in diagnosis and in treatment. And he gave us osteopathic medicine. Today, in the United States of America, if you want to become a doctor, you have a choice. You can go to osteopathic medical college or you can go to allopathic medical college. And the American osteopath today is a physician and surgeon like any other physician and surgeon. But he has an osteopathic approach with osteopathic principles as to what he does. In Europe, it's quite different. We decided to develop our skills along the lines of manual therapy. The difference between us and physiotherapy is that we are an independent profession. In England, in 1993, we had the Osteopath Act in Parliament. And that act gave us the same legal standing as doctors and dentists. Osteopathic medicine, as we practice it in Europe, is the science of connection. The osteopath is the person that says, not what is wrong with you, but why? Why this patient? Why this problem? And why now? And then, using all of his manual skills, he will attempt to encourage the body, if possible, to heal itself. We work alongside our allopathic colleagues. If you need surgery, 
If you need today's powerful drugs, osteopathy has no problem. But if you add your manual skills to today's modern medicine, maybe you won't need so many drugs. Maybe you can leave the surgery until later. I'm particularly interested in this idea of the connections between the body systems, between the muscular skeletal system, the structural system, between the fascial system, this internal skeletal framework, linking organs, bones, muscles, and the organs themselves, and the way that they have a part to play in our health. Let me give you an example. Back pain, neck pain are common conditions treated by the osteopath. Because our manual skills with our manipulations and our stretching techniques and our understanding of the etiology of musculoskeletal pain means that we're at the forefront. And so, not surprisingly, we see many patients with mechanical problems. But this guy is coming to see me and he's now been suffering from back pain for 18 months. He's been to the doctor. He's had some tablets. They changed the tablets. He's had a scan. It didn't show anything except degeneration. He's tried the exercises. They didn't work. And he's living with his pain. One of the things that he likes to take because it helps his pain is codeine, a very powerful analgesic. But unfortunately, codeine constipates him. And when he's straining to empty his bowel, his back goes into spasm. So he takes more codeine. So he is more constipated. As an osteopath, I'm going to be looking at the mobility and the connections between his intestine, his posterior abdominal wall, and his back pain. I'm going to treat him using my manipulations and my manual therapy, but add to that the opportunity to increase the mobility of his large intestine and to decrease the symptoms of his constipation. So he's going to have less pain, he will need less codeine, and with my treatments he will become less constipated. What about the patient who suffers from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease? The asthma patient, the ex-smoker, these are people who are living with a very compromised system. With osteopathic medicine, we can treat the lung, we can treat the attachments of the lung, we can treat the circulation within the mediastinum, the diaphragm, the ribs, the root of the lung, the relationship between the head, the thorax, the pelvis, craniosacral techniques which look at this relationship between these horizontal compartments that divide the head, which divide the chest, and which divide the pelvis. Many examples of good combinations of techniques on the viscera, but also of techniques where the viscera themselves contribute towards the musculoskeletal pain. It's a two-way street. Living things move. Dead things don't move very much. The more mobility I can get in my patients and in the organs in those patients, the more they will be healthy and alive and living. We all know if old people are confined to bed, they lose the use of their limbs they become constipated, they need catheterization. 
my old patients are encouraged to mobilise, to get up, with less back pain, with less hip pain, with better pelvic floor control. And so it is that we have this idea of how we connect. One of the things that I'm running are courses in functional technique. These were techniques that were discovered in the 1950s and invented and passed on through Professors Bowles and Hoover from Michigan State University through to Professor William Johnson and I learnt my craft from Bill Johnson. These are what's known as unwinding techniques. Now the normal manipulations involve putting tension into a segment to find a barrier sense and to accelerate through that barrier. These are techniques which are exactly opposite. They are techniques which look for ease and bind within a substance, within a structure, within a muscle, within a ligament. And by adding together a series of clues that lead us to ease, we can follow a pathway of ever increasing ease until we have a point of absolute minimum tension. My speciality is obstetrics. I treat the woman as she changes during her pregnancy to encourage that change before she develops her symptoms. I treat babies from one day old using these unwinding techniques so that the trauma of a traumatic birth can be rectified almost at the start of life. So for me, osteopathy and osteopathic medicine is a dynamic science working alongside my allopathic colleagues using very different palpatory techniques to enable a suffering patient to achieve a better standard of health. All right.